<laughs> and throughout the day, a brilliant and sturdy team. One of the things that uh, a lot of people were speculating upon in the run-up to this election was whether there would be one truly memorable moment, perhaps of political content or perhaps of a personality, and people like Colin and I collect these things, and uh, it is arguable that one of the most famous was in 1997, uh, when Stephen Twigg, a young, virtually unknown Labour Member of Parliament, defeated the sitting Tory uh, in the Enfield seat up in North London, uh, a man who was subsequently talked about as being a possible leader of his party, a defence secretary, a giant of the party conferences. That was Michael Portillo, and it hatched a book called Were You Up for Portillo? Were you up for Ed Balls? Were you up for Danny Alexander? Were you up for Esther McVeigh? Were you up for Charlie Kennedy? What an election. That is where we have to leave our live coverage of what has been a truly extraordinary day against predictions of all of the polls. The general election 2015 has delivered a majority government for the Conservative, and it is the party's first since 1992. There have been a series of heavy blows and high-profile casualties. Labour have been all but wiped out in Scotland. The Liberal Democrats left with a mere eight members of Parliament. As the big names fell, so too did their leaders. First to go, Nigel Farage, after failing to win Thanet South. Thank you very much. He was successful in his own seat of Sheffield Hallam, but Nick Clegg went next. A cruel and punishing night. And Ed Miliband, the former Labour leader, who said he was truly sorry that he did not succeed. It was the Conservatives' election. It was they who defied the odds and they who won a majority. It was them that went to the palace and that the Queen agreed to the formation, as he stressed, of a majority Conservative government. Back to number 10, Prime Minister. Prime Minister and wife, from all of us here, a very good afternoon.